Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox. Today I woke up with the urge to go thrifting. I've not gone thrifting in a while. As many of you guys know, and you've probably seen across my channel, I have been getting into it so much more. I've been posting so much more frequently, constantly thrifting. And that's because I feel like I could find so many unique, very budget-friendly pieces when I am thrifting. And it also gives opportunity for a thrift flip, which is what we're going to be focusing on in today's video. Now, if you've never seen one of my thrift flip videos in the past, it's basically where I take you guys along with me to shop the local thrift stores. I'm going to go to a couple different thrift stores today. We're going to have a fun little journey of checking out all the items that they have. I have not been to a thrift store in probably about a month, I would say. So I'm really excited to browse, walk around, get inspired, and see if we could find anything to flip, of course. And something else I want to mention about today's video is that it is kindly sponsored by Chime, which is very exciting because Marie, she's had a Chime card for a while. We and love I, Chime. We love Chime. And I recently just got a Chime card as well. And if you've never heard of Chime before, it is an award-winning financial app and debit card that millions of Americans use to manage, save, and spend their money. And I happen to have my Chime card right here. It's so cute, by the way, the design of this card. I love it. The whole entire app, everything about the company is just very modernized and very user-friendly, which I love. So we're going to be using the Chime card to purchase all the stuff, the supplies, the thrifted items, everything in today's video. Chime lets you feel good about your money without having to stress about those service fees that the traditional financial institutions always make you pay, which is very rude. And with Chime, you know your money is doing more for you and you're with a company that has your back which is really nice just to have that kind of reassurance. Let's go ahead and head on into our first location. I actually just parked right outside or Marie parked right outside. We're gonna head on in and see what they have and hopefully find some really great budget-friendly items that we can flip, of course. So I came across an item already, you guys. This is a cassette holder. And when I did my scrapbooking back in the days, I used to actually use these as ink pad holders because the ink pad would fit perfectly in these slots. It's only $1.99 and I have a feeling I could turn it into something. I'm not too sure what I could divide up in here, but I feel like there's options or possibilities. So I'm gonna put it in the cart for the time being. So I came across this little guy. I'm not too sure what it is, but it's $3.99 and I kind of think it could be a cool base for something. Maybe a taper candle holder. Honestly, these chairs are kind of a vibe. They are very like shabby shape but I feel like if you styled them right, they'd be kind of cool. We have lots of chairs. It has a price on it, but it's kind of pretty. The glass looks a little marred, but this is kind of pretty itself, and it has like the linen matting. side table and coffee table and they're so unique i love these edges on them however i just don't know what i would do to refinish them because they are in really really bad condition as you guys can kind of tell on the edges here and it's 45 for this one this one's 35 but i'm more interested in the coffee table i'm just not sure what i could do to flip this piece here we have another fun piece of decor which reminds me a lot of a little chain like a little marble chain you'd style on top of a set of books this is actually pretty large which i do like so i'm thinking about also grabbing this because i feel like i can cover each of these in like clay or some material to make it look a little bit more organic of our first thrift store and I actually found some really great finds you guys and everything added up to $35.19. I hope you can see that but I ended up getting a couple of things for the thrift flip video and also I grab always when I come to the thrift store items that I can just store and keep for future makeovers. Some of those pieces being this really cute frame here which I think I want to spray paint maybe brass and then I have this basket which I love. I love the wooden handles on the side. We have the cassette holder, this toy thingy which I think I'm going to DIY and this frame which I kind of want to turn into a mirror. Not too sure. Last but not least, we have our magazine rack. So the next thrift store that we're heading to is the Out of the Closet Superstore, which is one of my
my favorite thrift stores in Los Angeles. They always have really great pieces there. And while we're on our way, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of key features on the Chime debit card. With the Chime account, you can actually get paid early, so you can actually set up direct deposit to get your paycheck up to two days earlier than some of your coworkers. Chime also offers an amazing 24 seven live support, both in app, via email, and over the phone, so you can access help if you ever have a question or anything relating to your account. And you can also use Chime now to pay really anybody. Members that also have a Chime account get it as fast as a text message, and non-members can claim their funds to their bank account without any fees. And no extra app downloads are required. And last but not least, Chime also offers basically an overdraft protection, but better. Offering fee-free overdraft on up to $200 for debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with SpotMe for eligible members. And I also love the automated saving tools to help improve your habits. Guys, look, we are actually pulling up to the thrift store right now. I've always been somebody that's been pretty good at budgeting, but if you are somebody that, you know, isn't that great at budgeting, which is not bad at all, you know, everyone has to kind of start somewhere, you should definitely check out Chime. But let's go ahead and head on in. The thrift store is just right over there. Okay, this table is so unique. It's like wooden and ornate. It looks really, really cool. I've never seen anything like this before. Well guys, there is nothing at the out of the closet thrift store, which is normally where I find the most stuff. It's always hit or miss when you go to a thrift store. That's kind of the fun of it. You never know what you're gonna find. So we're gonna head to a couple more. Um, I still need to find some more items because I don't have enough to flip and I wanna flip a lot of things. So this simple floor based lamp, which looks something like this, is currently $12.99, but he said that all green tags today are 50% off. So it'd be $6. And I have an idea with some material that I actually have left over from a project I was working on to potentially turn this into something completely different. So that's an option. Um, I think I'm gonna grab this though, because I do wanna do a larger scale project and I haven't been able to find anything really large. So I think this is gonna be a great idea for this project I have in mind. Just left thrift store number four, I believe. And I feel like we have a decent haul of items. I have some items that I wanna go ahead and flip. I'm thinking the frame, the light for sure. Definitely this piece as well, the little magazine holder. And I wanna figure out what to do with this cassette holder as well. But I found some really cute decor that I definitely wanna utilize or just keep for future makeovers. Um, again, I always try to find this when I go to thrift stores and I just keep it in my stash. That way I have it for the future. So we have some budget friendly decor options. So let's head back and start brainstorming the ideas for these projects. Hello, good morning. It is time to get thrift flipping. But before we go ahead and dive on into these projects, you guys, I wanted to share with you kind of the befores and what I thrifted yesterday and what I'm going to be flipping today. The first item that we are going to be DIYing are these simple candlestick holders. I thought these were really cute. They are great as is, of course, but they're silver. They're just kind of a little bit boring. There's nothing too special about these. So I wanted to go ahead and kind of age them, give them a really antique to look, which I've been loving lately with DIYs, you guys have known. I got a couple more alcohol inks that I'm planning on using on these so we will see how those turn out I then found this incredible frame and I absolutely love the base of this frame I'm probably not gonna do much to it at all because I think the sage color that pops through is so pretty it has some warmth in it as well and this linen mat and all around it just looks so naturally aged but I do want to go ahead and DIY this glass in here and you're gonna see exactly what I'm doing during the process I don't want to give away too much because I think it's gonna be a really really cool kind of before and after and then I picked up this cassette holder here and I didn't have any idea what I wanted to do with this but I remember in my scrapbooking days I always would 
would pick these up because I would use them as stamp pad holders. So if you have like stamp pads or ink pads, you can just put them in here and it kind of organizes them. But I'm going to go ahead and turn this into something that you are not even going to see at all. I came up with the concept this morning and in my head it clicked perfectly and I'm very excited to show you guys this project. And our last item was that floor lamp base. If you guys remember, I'm not gonna hold it up because it's gonna look like a silver stick on the screen, but it is a base to a floor lamp, super simple, but I have a really great idea for this one as well that I am so excited to see and actually utilize perhaps in my living room. And as you guys were shopping along with me yesterday, you saw me utilizing my chime card, which I love. If you don't have a chime card or you wanna find out any more information, they actually gave you guys a really great deal. I'm gonna pop it up on the screen right now. But essentially, if you're one of the first 1,000 people to sign up for a chime account, you can actually use my promo code LONEFOX at chime.com slash get10, and they'll actually deposit $10 into your account once you activate your chime card. And I'll put all that info on the screen for you guys and in the description box below as well. But let's go ahead and dive on into these thrift flips. I'm so excited to transform this nice budget-friendly decor that we got at the thrift store. I think I'm gonna start off with the candlesticks. Diving on into our first project here, I have these simple metal tapers, which we're going to be giving a tarnished vintage effect to using some alcohol inks. Now I picked up a new color called Mushroom, which is the most perfect color for antiquing really any metal. And I'm using one of their blending tools to go ahead and just kind of pounce the alcohol ink right on top of our metal there. And the great thing about alcohol ink, if you have never used it before, is that it dries within probably five to 10 seconds and it layers really nicely. So you're able to achieve almost a stained look, but it looks incredible on top of metal, especially if you're trying to get an antiqued effect. So I'm going through and I'm just layering this up, letting each layer dry in between, and they kind of mesh and blend together at the same time, but hitting really every single facet of this candle holder. And then I'm going in with just a little bit of ginger, which adds a slight hint of brown to this piece, but I really felt like the right side and the left side was a total difference, and I love how you're able to get a really antique vintage effect without having to try too hard at all. I'd probably say the entire process from start to finish for all three of these candle holders was around 20 minutes it's fully dry. Once all the alcohol ink was applied, I went in with this Forged Hammer Burnish Amber spray paint, and I sprayed it directly on my surface and just used my finger to actually tap this onto some of the nooks and crannies on the pieces. I really feel like this actually dulls down your piece a little bit and gives it a bit more of that aged effect, and I love how it almost looks like an oxidized silver color as well. So all around, I feel like it just blends your alcohol inks together and overall dulls it down, gives it more of that aged effect, and I just love the outcome of these taper holders. For our second project, I wanted to utilize that frame that we found at the thrift store. So I went ahead and I first started by opening up the backside of the frame and just removing the glass from the inside. It just simply pried open all of those nails with a screwdriver there and then popped out that glass. It was a little bit stuck, but once I got it out, I gave it a good cleaning with just a little bit of glass cleaner because it was definitely a bit dirty. I then came across this product called Looking Glass Silver Spray Paint, and I actually watched a ton of reviews on YouTube about it. You're supposed to apply five coats of this to the opposite side of your glass, and once you flip it over, it resembles a mirror. So I did five coats of this. I did three on camera, and then I ended up doing two off camera. And you guys, when I flipped this over after it was dry, it did not resemble a mirror at all. And I watched all these people's tutorials, and theirs was a full-on mirror, but I just went with it, grabbed my alcohol inks, because we are going to be creating a faux mercury glass finish on this piece. And the way I'm going to be doing this is by first off giving a full coat of our mushroom color, just covering the entire piece of glass with this because we are going to be going in and layering on more after. And as you guys know, with these alcohol inks, as you kind of layer them up, they do pool and puddle in different ways and kind of change the look of them. So it's always an ever-changing process with alcohol inks. And I'm going in here with a little bit of that ginger color just to add a bit of warmth. And I do apologize about how this looks on camera. It's kind of hard to actually look at because the mirrored underside does actually reflect a little bit of the top side of the glass as well so it almost gives you this like double vision effect but once you're finished adding all of your alcohol ink onto the surface this turns into such a beautiful piece of mercury glass like look how beautiful that is i'm going to be popping this in to our frame now originally i actually thought i was going to go through and do a little bit of work on the frame as well maybe add some gold leaf here and there but when i flipped this over and saw it with the actual mercury glass it was just perfection and this is our final piece
Now let's go ahead and work on something a little larger, which is our floor lamp. I got this base at the thrift store for around $10, and I'm gonna go ahead and firstly measure out from the base to the top to see how long our floor lamp is. It is around 51 inches tall, and I actually found this cardboard tube, or I didn't find it. I got it shipped to me. This was a paper roll was inside of here that I used for a photo shoot. I kept the roll because I knew I wanted to utilize it for a DIY project in the future, and I'm glad I did because I actually cut this roll to 51 inches in length, and it was the perfect base for our floor lamp. And we're gonna be layering that on top just like this, but before that, we're actually gonna break out this new material that's called pole wrap. I love this stuff. It's essentially slatted wood on a sheet that's made for basement poles or like a pole in your home that's kind of an eyesore so you can wrap it, but we're gonna be cutting this to the same exact length, the 51 inches. So I'm bringing this out to my miter saw and I'm just gonna give it a quick chop. That's all you have to do to chop this pole wrap, which I love. And we're gonna be wrapping that around the cardboard pole. Just mark where you wanna kind of cut it at and use a box cutter to simply trim away the excess that you don't need anymore. And the wood itself is so pretty, but I decided to go in and actually stain it with the espresso wood stain. And I thought it would be a lot easier to stain it first before applying it to the pole. So that's what I did. I just laid it out on a piece of paper there and just gave it a nice staining. I actually stained all of the tops of the slats first and then kind of figured I can go back with a paintbrush after and do like the individual insets of the slats. And off camera, I actually went in with a smaller paintbrush and started individually painting each of those little slats to stain the inside. However, I thought, why not use a larger paintbrush? And I needed to do a second coat of stain anyways, so I just added a thick, generous coat of stain over the top, wiped off the excess, and it created the most perfect color. I just love how this looked. And then we're going to apply it onto our cardboard tube there. So I'm going to be applying it on with some hot glue. And if you guys have ever ordered a paper roll like this before, the cardboard is extremely thick. I don't want you to think that this is is like some unsturdy piece because it is impossible to bend, I swear to you. So I'm using some Gorilla Hot Glue and just rolling that on. And then I decided to give the base of our piece a coat of this hammer black spray paint I had in my stash. I hadn't been able to use this yet, but the finish of this piece is so pretty. I highly suggest it if you guys have never used it before. Once everything was dry, I applied a coat of hot glue to the bottom, flipped it over, and just let it sit on the base for about 10 minutes or so until it was fully dry, and then added my lampshade right on top with a bulb inside, and that finished off our floor lamp. final project, I'm going to be using this cassette holder that I found for $6.99, and I'm actually going to be turning it into an advent calendar because there are 48 sections, and the back was already kind of removed, so I ended up pulling off the back completely. It was just stapled in a couple of spots. Once that was removed, I pulled out each of the vertical inserts of this piece, so I just slipped out all three of those, and then I went ahead and I removed every other horizontal insert. So you can see here that I'm just removing every other one. There was 48 slots originally, so basically what we're going to want to create is 24 larger slots slots, and I'm going to slip back in all three of those vertical inserts. And once everything is reconfigured, we're just going to attach the back on. I couldn't find my staple gun, which would have been way easier, so I just brought out my brad nailer and just kind of attached this to the backing of the piece, and this is how it looks on the front side. As you can see, the slots are a little bit larger now, which will fit these little muslin bags I found online perfectly, and I'm going to actually draw 1 through 24 onto 24 of these little muslin bags. These are 3 by 4 bags, and I'll link them below for you guys if you are curious. All I'm doing is going in and kind of thickening up some sections, so it kind of has that calligraphy feel, but it's still really Really, like natural and kind of hand-drawn at the same time. I love the way that that looks. This is what my bags ended up looking like, but I realized I actually needed five hooks or six hooks to go across the top because all the other sections had slits I could slide the bags into, which you'll see in a second here, but I realized that the top of the advent calendar didn't have hooks, and I was going to use some silver screw hooks, but I just didn't have any in my stash, so I grabbed these command hooks because I just had them on hand, glued them to the top there, and inside of each of the little bags, you can add a piece of candy, a small little gift, or some money, and just tie the knot pretty close to the bag, but tie it very loosely so it's very easy to open and simply slip it in to your little kind of section that was now removed that we ended up removing when we took it apart and it just makes the perfect little slot for your knot to kind of slide into and hold your bag in your advent calendar. The process from here on out is honestly pretty repetitive so you can slip in a little gift, some candy, whatever you want to add and then just add the bag into its slot in the advent calendar and repeat until you have all 24 bags added. I 
I mean, you guys, how perfect did this advent calendar turn out? And I could use it year after year. wraps up today's thrift flip video. I hope that you enjoyed this one. I'm actually sitting by one of my favorite projects from today's video because I just thought it was such an innovative idea and I'm gonna be leaving this in my living room all of December for sure. It's so, so cute in this corner here, you guys. But genuinely, I also loved the other three projects just as much. The candle holders and the mercury glass I was obsessed with and that floor lamp also was, I think, such a unique idea. I would love to know which project in the comment section below was your guys' favorite and if there was a technique that you learned in today's video that you wanna try out maybe, also let me know which one that is. And before letting you guys go do not forget to also check out chime if you are interested i will put the link at the top of the description box below and put the offer on the screen right here as well it's great because the first thousand people essentially get 10 free dollars we all love a little bit of free money every now and then do we not but yeah that finishes off today's video give this one a thumbs up if you enjoyed and you'd like to see more thrift flips in the future and i will catch you guys in the next one bye everybody